because you're here i think we have to use the opportunity to talk about the business of fitness mm mm-hmm. how many people in our country are into fitness <laughs> and then we're going to come back to this right. conversation and summarize because i really want r- tangible fungible takeaways right. yeah of what people can incorporate yeah. so we'll just summarize all we spoke about once sure. and things that we think people should do but maybe you can talk about the business see i think the answer to that is not enough you know we have only 5 million people in the country who go to gym who pay for any kind of gym membership out of a country of you know 1.4 billion people it's a 0.4% penetration compared to about 20% in us 15% in europe so very few people are going to any kind of gym if you include people who go to park in the for morning walk run etc the number you know grows to about 10 12 million so about a crore or so it's just too small i think we are a very early in the culture of fitness you know people are just waking up to the potential of fitness and also the you know the so called you know western lifestyle and what people call sad diet you know standard american diet is catching up with people and a combination of you know sedentary lifestyle poor diet choices is catching up and so people are become aware the number is growing but i think you know i would love to see that day and not only because as a you know somebody who is involved with cult but in general i think physical activity is so important and it was i think part of our culture in many different ways until say probably 30 40 years ago you know we used to go for morning walks evening walks in every small town you will see people after the meal they'll go for evening walks right uh not of you know, free yoga classes will happen you know every neighborhood all of that has stopped and this more organized way of fitness has not really taken off in a big way but hopefully that will change you know i think um you know we to also talk about the you know how fast the lifestyle diseases lifestyle diseases are diseases of lifestyle you know diabetes hypertension cardiovascular diseases mental health issues everything is on the rise while on the fitness gym goes a 5 million the number for all these diseases are in many tens of millions you know you start with 50 million for diabetes go up to as many as 150 million people who are diabetic or pre diabetic right and all those diseases are it's not you know you are genetically you have to get those it's because people are getting accustomed to poor uh, lifestyle choices lot of people just don't know what is the right thing to do the awareness is very low bad habits get formed sometimes bad habits are promoted within the household we have seen you know all these high sugar so called you know the health drinks you know that you know oh, yeah. parents you know give to their young kids and you get used to that right and only now people are realizing how much how high the sugar content like that case which is going on yeah recently i mean that's you know is great that awareness building all up protein bone vita boost yeah violin. absolutely you know these and i mean growing up we all thought yeah, they were yeah. health drinks right you know uh maggi you know and that example right you know it was you know uh, wheat maggi yeah wheat maggi which is probably i don't know 1% in you know, wheat or something like that right it's a I think the the point is you know we have gone from a uh, lifestyle of abundance you know a lot of fast food has come in a uh, lot of packaged food has come in which was really growing up I don't remember you know having access to a lot of packaged food and everything was you know locally grown homemade fresh which is you know very cool now but it was in ex available to everybody just you know few decades ago so I think this gap between the tremendous rise in lifestyle diseases and not enough culture of you know active lifestyle is a problem for the country and i hope in coming decades in that changes right yeah so this is something that you know like has Green been matter health also is there yeah. so so yeah, there's been like a passion project you know right. for the last 2 3 years uh so uh run this thing called as rain matter health you know so we've been partnering startups working in the space who's trying to make it easier for indians to make healthier choices right uh, so i've thought about it quite a bit over yeah. the last 2 3 years and i come to a conclusion that i think the only way to get that 5 million number to go up is i don't know if people will i mean you need to people will go for fitness reasons you know i mean i, I think it has to be sport reason no. i think you know sport has to be promoted in this country right. you know outside just cricket right as in uh, i think if you look at the us i think one of the big reasons why so many people go to the gyms is because this college scholarships right. you know that you know ha- having a sports background that helps you get into a good college is a good you know is a reason right so i think something like that has to happen in india as in you know there has to be like this culture of playing sports that starts very early because yeah. if you're playing a sport automatically you'll do everything else right, right? as in uh, basically 
what you're saying is bang on. You know, extracurricular activity has to go out. Right. And it's to, it has to be a part of the curriculum. Right. It has to be... You have to be graded for that and you have to get scores for that. And those scores should make a difference. And that's right. the only way it will make that difference. You know, if you really truly want to make a difference in this country in terms of health, I think it's about getting more people to play sports. You know, some physical extracurricular activities. Yeah. I mean, this is something that, you know, internally we were talking at Zeroda saying that maybe we should announce that, you know, in our hiring we'll have 10% quota for, you know, like, you know, because, you know, businesses, yeah. even if you're not, you know, it's very hard you know, if some businesses, if they come forward and start making these kind of announcements, right. maybe people will think more about, you know, sports. Medical progress is going to make sure that we all, our life expectancy is going to keep going up. And over the last 20 years, India's life expectancy has gone from like 60 to 70. And it'll probably, by the time the current generation of people are 70 years old, the life expectancy will probably have gone to 80, 90. Right. Right. So the question then is, what is the quality of life you want to lead in the last 20, 30, 40 years, right? And, and the kind of life you live today is what will determine the quality of life then. Right? Do you want to increase your lifespan or you want to increase your health span, which is, you know, you want to live longer healthily. If we had to pick up saying, why should people care about health and fitness? I think the easiest way I have found to explain to people within Zero, you know, within our company mm -hmm. has been that, dude, you guys are going to live you know, assume that most of you guys will live till 90 years of right. age. You'll probably stop working at 60. Yeah. You have 30 years of your life, right? right? 30 years of li your life, which is like a retirement period, yeah. right? Now, one is, what is the quality of life you want? And second, what is the health cost, right. like, you know, of, of that 30 years, right? As in, if, if, you, if, you, if you don't have had a healthy lifestyle, all the saving that you've had from now to 60, Will probably not be enough for you to take from 60 to 90, right. you know, for majority of the people, right? As in, uh, because, you know, people tend to understand when it comes to, you know, like, as soon as it's money, right, people relate better, right? Yeah. As in, if you can explain to people that if, if you can take care of your health better now, means you can lead to a better money outcome, uh, people tend to then know, oh, is it? And, you know, mm. they think like that, you know, so... <laughs> well, it's cheaper than illness. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's what you'll have to drive yeah. in. I think no going question. back to what you were saying, Nitin, is what will it take for people to, especially in their younger years, to take health seriously? It's not really top of mind. Sometimes people get into it because of aesthetic reasons. You want to look a certain way. And that's probably the biggest trigger for people to consider in their 20s and 30s. But that's where, you know, most of the changes can happen. You know, beyond that, the long-term impact of that, you know, building a strong foundation in your 20s, 30s and keep nurturing that in your 40s, 50s. I think it's also not only about increasing your health span from 60 to 90, but even, you know, people who are not proactive about their health, they start to see things start to happen, you know, in late 30s, 40s onwards, you know, you start to gain weight, you start to have pre-diabetic symptoms, you know, somebody will put on a statin for cholesterol management, you know, you start taking something for managing diabetes and so on. And I think that, you know, you're, you start to have uh, you know, blood pressure issues, you start to feel a little foggy in the mind, you know, difficulty to deal with stress and so on. So I think there are a lot of, you know, silent effects that starts to accumulate. So I think the key point is, you know, what will it take for, you know, country at large to wake up to the need and the long-term impact? You know, like you said, it's very difficult to visualize what will happen to me, you know, 30, 40 years out. I think, you know, there is also this whole other culture of you live only once, right? You know, I'm going to sleep when I'm dead, you know. <laughs> all those kind of, you know, misinformation that is almost glamorized at times. You know, it's a, and a lot of people buy into that because that seems more appropriate, you know, when you are a certain age. So I think changing the conversation is probably very hard. I think it, you know, one person alone can do it. I think it's, you know, everything from individuals, people who are, you know, public personalities to the government to anyone who was able to influence, you know, talking more about health. I think I remember in, I think in uh, uh, Michelle Obama, right, she has this whole movement around just, I think, something move. I forgot, you know, what the phrase was, right? but no, she made it a mission for eight years in White House to only talk about getting people to move, right? You know, that's one effort, you know, many uh, such others. So I think we'll have to, as a country, you know, rise up to taking it really seriously. Otherwise, eventually, health costs will add up. We can easily end up with a lot of people, to your point, living very long, but all of them need to be on some kind of medical attention continuously, right? You know, 
massively increasing healthcare costs, any quality of life is not this great. And uh, so, yeah, big, you know, large problem. Glad you guys are, you know, taking initiative to at least, you know, initiate a conversation on, the, conversation on this. Hi, I'm Nikhil Kamat. I'd love to know what you thought of the episode. Uh, comment, like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.